Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I just finished uh, reading uh, WYSIWYG by uh, Ed Piscor, and uh, man, <laughs> I gotta tell you, it is just what <coughs> the doctor ordered. Uh, so I did the two videos yesterday um, about the, you know, Dan Slott shenan shenanigans. He's friends with people who he knows work to keep me out of stores. He's like, well, why are they circumventing stores? It's like, you know, call your friend Mark Wade, ask him why we're not in stores. Uh, so that's pretty, I got angry. I actually had to go stress eat a whole pizza. It was one of those artisanal thin crust pizzas. So it wasn't like, it was the equivalent of eating two slices of a real pizza, but it felt like stress eating. Um, uh, I've said this many times. Uh, I fought in two wars and uh, comic book uh, people are the worst people I've ever met. Um, just absolutely awful people. Not obviously not all of them, but the bad actors in comics are just just awful and, and it always has to go to, back to some sanctimony uh, uh dan slot uh got some clap back for what he said yesterday and i peeked in on him and he was saying uh, uh oh it's just because of, of a homophobic yeah, yeah yeah they always go to sanctimony they always go to sanctimony um uh but uh anyway um <laughs> the other thing that really bothered me is uh and it was it, usually i miss stuff like this and then i picked up on it is that they were doing the typical defending of Max. And as I said before, you you know, you know someone's a fraud when you're not allowed to criticize them. I can say, Scott Snyder sucks. Chris Claremont, whatever, sucks. Frank Miller sucks. Everyone just goes, oh yeah, okay, that's fine opinion. You say, Max is I just, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So when he was defending her, someone who is of the highest level of privilege and doesn't need to be defended, uh, he said something very interesting. He said, well, she has a lot of books in a TV show. And I was like, wow. I, you know, I've talked about the SJWs want to create a post-success uh, era. And then I talked about, you know, my uh, my friend really opened my mind. When he, when he said, you know, dopamine isn't just a drug that gets you high. It basically synthesizes success. And then, you know, people send me screenshots. And then they sent me one of Mags, who I... I took it, you know, obviously it's a little blind item, neener, neener thing, but it's also just a complete mockery of everything that art is supposed to stand for. It said, you know, I'm Mags Asagio. I make books to get adapted into TV shows, and I get Eisner nominations. So I was like, that is, that is a level beyond cynicism. You're just literally talking about the advantages of your state of privilege and not your talent, which doesn't exist. People aren't even lying and saying Mags is talented anymore. Meanwhile... We should be talking about actual talents, and we should be talking about them a lot. One of the side effects of my buy cut, which is, I didn't make up that term, I like it. A buy cut means, obviously I can't stop reviewing Marvel and DC Comics because that's part of my entire business model. Is um, uh, But after they hired someone who uh, drove uh, you know, one of their exes uh, to suicide, I, it's, it, it's not funny, it's not fun. So I'm, I'm going to buy and review that less. You know, still probably one per day. But I mean, remember two years ago, I used to do three or four per day. But it allows me time to buy this stuff. And I've got hundreds of comics, <laughs> older comics. So this one is WYSIWYG. This was, I believe, the third graphic novel of Ed Piscor. Ed Piscor is the, um, the guy from Cartoon is Kayfabe and uh, Hip Hop Family Tree. That's probably, oh, and X-Men Grand Design. He is a, a classic old school uh indie comic book pro he writes he draws he letters he does it all he designs uh the form factor of this is just absolutely awesome it's a it's a hardcover it's a thick hardcover it's got uh a, you know a uh, embossed like you go to this disc drive it actually dips down a little bit same with the logo same with the uh oh wait no the uh the uh monitor and the housing it goes in a little bit and it comes out it's it's just it's fun remember when i said it's not funny it's not fun well this is funny well, actually this, this isn't funny it's actually really uh sad um but uh this is a real labor of love 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 yeah sure love and uh, just beautiful and uh I, I bought this because of ed piscor he was doing a review they were doing you know uh him and jim rugg and tom Sioli. they're on cartoonist kayfabe and he was basically talking about uh jim rugg is like indie indie he's like I will glue the pages into my own book, Indy. Um, uh, he does really cool things like he'll make trade paperbacks of floppies. Uh, oh, I, 
Okay, so the short version is glue. <laughs> the short version is glue plus a whole bunch of other things, including stitching, including all these types of things. It was fantastic. But um, it was very interesting to hear Ed Piscor talk about this because not only is this, is this a work of art, he had a story to tell, and he told it very uh, well. But he also really cares about sales. Um, he talked about you know uh, self-publishing, you know versus going to the publisher. He worked with Top Shelf, and he basically said, if if it's if you're not getting ten thousand sales from a publisher, you might as well do it yourself. Now we now have people <laughs> who have Eisner nominations who aren't even hitting one thousand in sales. But Ed Piscor basically said ten thousand or you're a chump. Um, and uh, it, this was probably about two years of his life. It's kind of a trick question because it was done over several years as you know one chapter at a time. But the way he describes it, he pretty much uh, not redid it from scratch, but specifically. Uh, re-edited it. There's there's a um, a bit right here where like one word will be really big and he'll emphasize it. And then if I remember correctly, uh, what happened is it was just too wordy. Like you're just starting off. This is almost kind of like some uh, interviews. And then it was just like giant dense block of text. And he knew he he needed to lighten up. What I'm trying to say is that. Ed Piscor is basically everything that a comic book pro should be, and Mags is everything that a comic book pro shouldn't be. You're not supposed to focus on things outside of comics. You're not supposed to focus on awards that you got because of your identity, your privileged identity. You're not supposed to talk about TV shows you got because you got 30 different assignments because everyone wanted to look woke and hire you. And then your agent, which you got the first year in the industry, was able to cover an entire studio executives desk and oh look look at the, look at the hottest comic pro out there um this is supposed to, how you're supposed to do it they even talk at the end how he started working for uh uh harvey picar uh worked with him on two books uh was working on hip-hop family tree while he's doing this which is a collection of uh shorter stories he redid them so let's get to uh review starts at 7 15 for people who like to type things like that so this is a uh uh, Ed Piscor talks about it on a show. He used to listen to a radio show that he really liked, and, and they would have this uh, uh, guy who was a hacker who had done some jail time, I believe was friends with the guy who ran the show, and he just found it fascinating. It sounded like it was one of those like old-school AM you know, talk radio interview shows where they would just talk to someone for like three, four hours, and it sounds like that guy was on several times. So um, Ed Piscor really got into the lore of hacking, specifically early 1980s hacking, uh, specifically hacking based off of, uh, you know, the, the phone uh, company networks. And we get this fairly epic story of sadness. It's, it's a, lo a lot of it is based on real life. And we get to uh, find out about this guy. He's got this really weird name. It's like Kevin Freneal. Um, but his uh, he's got a hacker name, which is Thump thoink something. I'm sorry. I just read it and I loved it, but I'm blanking on uh, specific things like names. So he's this kid, uh, grown up. He's a nerd. He gets beat up, uh, but it's uh, it's not done in this cliche way. It's done in this kind of uh, hard scrabble, real kind of way. You know, I was uh, visiting a friend and I was talking uh, to his son, and the wait, the friend and me are basically the same age, so. The son was talking about, you know, I know when, you know, my dad and you were kids, things were different. I was like, yeah, like, I didn't really think things that were rough when I was a kid because they were so much more peaceful than, you know, my dad's generation and my grandpa's generation. Jeez, back during my grandpa's generation, like, basically almost every family had, like, a sibling that just died, you know, often during childbirth or shortly afterwards. Like, you'd have a woman who would have four or five kids just to see three of them hit adulthood. And then two of them go die in a world war. Like if things were freaking rough and it wasn't just, you know, you know, spankings and getting grounded and kids having to work and not like it was just a different time. So usually they kind of do this in a very kind of cheese ball way. Like it's like an after school special. But yeah, you used to just be like kind of like walking around and minding your own business. All of a sudden you were in a fight or people were calling you like homophobic epithets. I remember getting called a, a you know what, you know. Uh, 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 because, uh, my bicycle had like a tiny little purple stripe on like 
one part of it. And that was enough to get called, you know, a homophobic epithet. It was just raw. You'd get in fights suddenly. You'd get in fights because people would just say, so like, you got a problem? It's like, I, I, I do now. Because you said, I, do I have a problem? I don't have a problem. Sometimes you just, I don't know, you looked at someone wrong or you, you looked near them wrong or you're too close to them or something. Just, and this wasn't like in the big bad city. It was just kind of everywhere. So it kind of brought me back to the days where things were kind of like sketchy and just... You just suddenly get in fights and everyone was kind of weird and creepy um, and everything was. Uh, so he starts off like scamming the, the bus ticket. Uh, you know, you can get a transfer with a punch. So he just lies to the bus drivers like, where do you get the punch? I, I think it's cool. I want to use it for uh, my homework assignments. Um, so he starts basically learning how to, 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 to scheme and scam, as they say. The problem is this becomes his whole life and this destroys his whole life. And it's weirdly heartbreaking and kind of a stepped back way because you kind of see that this kid's problem his parents are dead he's raised by his uh grandma he's basically a latchkey kid he seems to grow up in this kind of sketchy uh neighborhood is that um there wasn't really much there he's kind of just this empty person he he likes getting over on people but there's no real impetus to it it's just kind of like I'm sad. Oh, I can do this. It makes me happy. It's, again, it's kind of the dopamine. Your, your brain kind of goes in the direction of, of, you know, what made you not feel sad? Oh, you know, when I said, uh, I hate Nazis and I got 15 likes, that made me feel good and like I was really fighting Nazis. No, you just type something by yourself and you're, 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 set. you're still sad. You were just happy for that much. So he's, you know, he's good at this and he has a friend who's kind of into it. Not really. Um... And uh, you just see his, you know, his life kind of, he gets better at something that it would be good to not be good at at all because it basically destroys his life. They do get into basics of hacking, specifically, you know, 1970s, 1980s uh, phone network hacking, but just stuff like this. Like, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good point where he's on like a, a what is it called? A party line. And then uh, he meets a girl, she invites him over. And she's happy to see him. I wish I could find that one. And then he goes, look at her disappointment. And then he leaves. And you can see he just kind of gave up on ever having any kind of a, a normal life. Um, and it was just kind of over from then. It was just about how can he get over on people. And then, you know, he quickly gets found out. So then the uh, I think he gets first uh, uh, arrested when he's like uh, 19 or so. And then it basically becomes the rest of his life. Getting in trouble. At one point he goes on the uh, run. And uh, it's, not a, it's not glamorous at all. Here's what's really, really interesting. Um, I believe some of this is, you know, Ed Piscor's thoughts on, you know, the, the, the uh, prison complex and, and justice system in America. Even the military and things like that. But it never feels like he is definitively telling you what to think of it. Uh, I suppose if you're really like fight the power type of person, you'd be like, yeah, Kevin's awesome. It's just a system set up. Whereas I just caught and I saw it as an empty person, just kind of sadly moving in whatever direction made him temporarily less sad. And then of course, you know, the law is always going to win. The house is always going to win. So uh, his life gets really, really screwed up and effectively destroyed. In fact, weirdly enough, one the quote best thing that happens to him is he gets viciously assaulted in prison and then in a weird kind of i don't know if i call it a stretch because it is set up earlier um is that uh the guards lie because they didn't stop the assault then they then it becomes a media you know uh sensation and then he ends up getting he's he's been waiting for a trial for years which i can i can empathize with that <laughs> um and uh Although, you know, obviously it's very different situations, criminal versus civil and things like that. Um, uh, but he finally gets his trial and then he gets hit guilty, but time served, so he gets out. But as you see from the end, I'm not going to show the end, I want you to buy this. Um, it's very sad. It's a very well done. It's art. It's not propaganda. Art means it asks questions instead of giving you uh, definitive answers, or as they like to say, Debates over that. There's no debating this. There is debating this. You can you can say what you think about uh, the. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't think of his freaking hacker name. They say it like a hundred times in here. Boing thumb. Oh, and there's a special uh, uh, cameo by Harvey uh, Keitel's um, 
Har Harvey Keitel's character from Taxi Driver. Um, so uh, an actual work of art, this should be this should be what is recognized and spoken about in comics instead of complete frauds and clowns who cynically uh, um, monetize and uh, weaponize their identity. Weaponize to prevent them from being criticized and uh, monetized to, you know, they can't actually sell comics, but they can sell their identity semi-successfully for a short period of time. Anyway, go check it out. What a great knock that is. Uh, I bought this uh, on Amazon. I think it was effectively cover price. It wasn't bad. I think it was like $17. This is, to me, is uh, uh, just fantastic. A, re a true work of art that deserves uh, recognition. And uh, also, got to respect that hustle. Ed Piscor was very, very clear. This was a moneymaker. And this has been a moneymaker with him for years. I mean, he was, he was uh, Hustlenomics 101. You know, he was, you know, contacting, you know, the, the subcultures and the websites and the magazines where, you know, people who would be into this type of thing would get it. And he's just been selling and selling and selling it. And so uh, he definitely deserves more sales. I think you will like this. You don't have to be into uh, computers. Honestly, it was more of like phone hacking than computer hacking, although that was in here as well. But a great work of art. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the... Uh, GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. Oh, let's do something fun since uh, this, uh, even though it's a bit heavy, I can mail this uh, really, really, really cheaply using media mail uh, because it has an ISBN on it. So, gonna give this one away. How should, how, what's the determination? Oh, oh great. So one of the things in this book is they used to have the radio radio contest back in the, especially in the 80s. And it was like, you know, the, 70, the 72nd uh, caller. Um, so it will be the, I'll just do, I, I can't guarantee 72 people are going to ask for it. And I don't want to keep track about it. So I will do, instead of 72nd, I will do 7 plus 2, 9. Whoever is the ninth person in the comments to ask for this will get it for free. It probably just cost me like I don't know, three bucks to mail it to you. So that's fine. You'll you'll get it for free. So obviously, do not put your address. It's not secure. Um, uh, diversitycomics at gmail dot com. I'm confusing this. The winner. I will tell you you're the winner, and then email me at, at don't people who email me to that's not. It's going to be in the comments. The comments are where you win. The ninth person in the comments to ask for this will get it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.